imply that he's got science when he hasn't. Science, in reality, does prove things. That's why it's used in the magic trick. If you can infer that you have science, then the person you're telling that to will automatically, instinctually believe that it has been empirically validated because that's what science does. Empirically validate. That's what experimentation does. So, if you don't have any experimentation and you imply that you have science and then just as a reminder, science is right whether you like it or not, you'll understand that when he says science, it's right whether you like it or not. In reality, he hasn't got any science. That's Neil deGrasse Tyson. But when he uses that magic word, you'll believe he does. him problems internally and make him make him feel like oh no the audience thinks I don't know what I'm talking about because you're pointing out that he doesn't know what he's talking about. Gotcha so hold him to task on his claims that it's mass attracting mass and then maybe say well how does that fit into pseudo and for space time bending or something along those lines in other, in other words make him appear like he doesn't know what he's actually talking about because he clearly doesn't or he does and he's intentionally equivocated between the out of date mass attracting mass force that is no longer a force. But you can think of it as a force when you describe the pseudo-Ramonian space-time, a concept, bending. Time, we don't experience time in a physical manner. It's not something you can bend or dilate. And the uneven distribution of mass causing a concept to bend is ludicrous. It certainly isn't a force. It's not even detailed in a claim to be physical manner when it's described in the geometry. Pseudo Ramonian for space time bending. What's pseudo mean? Sham space time? Yeah, absolutely. Let's just it summarize was. that in terms of people who might be listening and want to know how do you actually defeat a gravity argument? If somebody asserts that mass attracts mass, point out to them that gases don't do that. When they say mass attracts mass, what they actually want to do is assert that there is an always in effect downward vector at 9.8 metres per second per second. That's gravity in their mind. After they'll detail the current up-to-date nonsense of pseudo ramonian force space time bending. They'll describe it as an emergent force, when it isn't, that causes things to fall to the ground. Things don't fall to the ground. Some things go up. And it's not as a result of the gases around them going down, go boom, boom. Gases don't go down to force other gases up. All gases move in all directions always to fill whatever volume they've got to fill. That is gas behaviour. All vectors. So some things go up. This is summarised when someone says, oh, well, we've got a force of gravity. Why aren't we floating away? Oh, well, my helium balloon just did, didn't it? Oh, well, that's because the gases around it are being pulled down. Oh, you think gases are created in the sky and fall like rain when they're in fact created at ground level and expand upwards? Look at that cloud. Is that created in the sky or did it come from the water cycle and the gas going up? Absolutely annihilating this out of date by 107 years assertion that mass attracts mass. It doesn't. Further to that, your new hotness, that would be pseudo ramonian force space time bending, that's Einsteinian gravity, isn't a force. It's a conceptual medium. So that's how you annihilate so, gravity. I was talking to someone the other day about it. Nathan was saying about the earth rotating. It says, like, the air's, you're saying me, the whole air that's by the ball is moving as if it's in a contained system where it's not affected by the, the different volumes of space that the earth is supposedly got traveling through, through this giant va vacuum. So if we're, we're going through different volumes of space. At a speed of 2.1 million kilometers per hour. And the air around it is traveling as if it's not traveling because we're experiencing no rotation, no movement, no displacement. Yeah, air, air goes in all directions, but they're trying to say that it's going in all directions, but at the same time, uniformly going in one direction. It's just everything about the model is counterproductive. And like you said, gas goes up. You know, so we see all sorts of steam, any sorts of air going in all directions spontaneously. This is how you, on Earth's surface, are moving through the universe aboard spaceship Earth. 
Okay. So how now they're trying to say that's the reason they're displacing air going upwards. So it's counterproductive what they're saying because we're they're, it's spontaneously going all directions. So obviously some it's just not the mass, but the certain amount of material of things. They have a, a certain um, place where they stay. Gas molecules are the most independent. They bounce off each other. Like you said, mass doesn't attract mass because when they collide, it cre- cre- creates kinetic energy and they're bouncing in opposite directions. If 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 gas was you know if mass attracts mass, they would clump together. Who's that, Tommy? Yeah. Kudos. Yes, very well summarised. Other than the kinetic energy bit, no, there's elastic collisions. But other than that, absolutely really? correct. Okay. If science doesn't prove things, then how can it be, quote, true whether we, whether or not we believe it, end quote, as stated by Neil deGrasse Tyson? I'll cover that briefly. So Neil deGrasse Tyson's utilising the magic trick of science in the heliocentric realm, which is to make up a just-so story and imply that it has scientific validity. That's all Neil deGrasse Tyson with his magician waistcoat does. Imply that he's got science when he hasn't. Science, in reality, does prove things. That's why it's used in the magic trick. If you can infer that you have science, then the person you're telling that to will automatically, instinctually, believe that it has been empirically validated, because that's what science does. Empirically validate. That's what experimentation does. So if you don't have any experimentation and you imply that you have science and then just as a reminder, science is right whether you like it or not, you'll understand that when he says science, it's right whether you like it or not. In reality, he hasn't got any science. That's Neil deGrasse Tyson. But when he uses that magic word, you'll believe he does. He's actually peddling pseudoscience. That's why we have been saying for quite a significant period of time that we shouldn't fall victim to the same mistake and utilise pseudoscience to make our claims. It leaves us vulnerable to them just using and peddling the same exact trick and saying, well, this is the right science. That's the right science. Well, my flat earth science is the right science. No, your science isn't real science. My globe earth science is the real science. All right, is there any science in any of this? Let's have a little look. Step one. Observe natural phenomena. Anybody got any of that? Oh, look, check it out. Nobody's got a phenomena being observed. We've got a few little tests that are claimed to be done. Well, that would be scientifically experimentation. But tests on stuff that man have made, that's definitely not a natural phenomena. But we've got flat earthers and we've got globe earthers both peddling pseudoscience because they don't really know what science is. And they've got their own claims on the flat earth side that need this magic trick of science where it isn't really applicable. So, we're all vulnerable. We're all using the same magic trick and bullshit to claim that we've got something we haven't, which is empiricism, which is only offered, whether you like it or not, by science, if you actually perform the method. Step one, observe a phenomena. Something happening in nature. Not caused or made by man, that would be synthetic. Something in nature that occurs naturally that you want to know the cause of. You look at it. See it occur and go, I wonder what caused it. Then you formulate a hypothesis. That would be your effect that you observed in nature as your dependent variable and what you believe will cause it, your independent variable, presumed cause of the effect. Now, that presumed cause of the effect will be validated by you varying it and seeing if it causes the effect you observed. If it does you have validated your presumed cause in an experiment. If it doesn't, you have validated your null in an experiment. That would be, if I vary what I assume causes this effect I observed, it doesn't cause the effect. You vary it, it doesn't cause it. You validated that it wasn't the cause of the effect. Validation, empiricism, that's what science offers if the method's done. Tyson has none, but he'll infer it and use the power that it infers when he peddles stories about lights in the sky. understand yet 